and welcome back now as you can see from the workbench I've got a TFT running and yes you can learn how to do this on your TFT too and guess what it's just not that difficult and it builds on a previous video that we talked about not using so many hard-coded switches and things on your project well on this one you don't even have to have a switch you can just use a screen because this particular screen is a touch screen oh look that even looks like a button there let's have a look what happens when we uh, touch that you can use your finger you can use the little thing they come with it there's a little tiny plastic pen but I've lost that of course oh and there we are it's running again so hello Arduinoites yes this is what it's all about um, a very quick video on how to implement this shield now this is a, a full-size uno shield and it just plugs straight in on top and of course there are well some caveats or at least a price to pay for that there is um, this one here this is marginally smaller this one here is a 2.4 this one is a 2.2 I believe I think it even says it on the back yeah that's a 2.2 but apart from that um, they're pretty much the same obviously the pinout is totally different for this one this one just plugs into your Uno you don't have to think about it well not too much and uh, this one of course has got one set of pins and you most certainly do have to think about that additionally whereas this one runs on your uno and you don't really care about anything like voltages on this one as you noticed on the back here I've actually got a little note to myself to say 3.3 volts well brackets maybe um, I think it is 3.3 though more to the point the um the, some of the control pins might be 5 volt torrent but I think the VCC is 3.3 anyway I put a maybe on there to remind myself just to double check that right let me um, reset this video's brightness control because obviously I've dimmed it down a bit so that you get a better looking at this and okay let's say this up front so I won't have to tell you again when you're looking at this LCD here this background that comes across on camera sort of a well it's a blue color isn't it really in real life it's not it's pitch black okay so that's pitch black yellow purple green it just looks better in real life like most things on in uh, leds and tfts and things do so let's there we are, and off it runs again right let me reset the camera so they've got the um, exposure correct and then we'll talk a bit more about it okay here we are then now was it easy to do this mm sort of well no really it wasn't it, it was a lot of faffing about with libraries and finding libraries that didn't work and then finding some that did and um, being led down a rabbit hole really of what to actually use and the internet's awash with people saying i've got this tft screen and it looks vaguely like i don't know this one or this one and this library doesn't work all i get is a white screen and those posts are probably you know two three four years old even well things move on don't they in the Arduino world and uh, the libraries that we're using on here are in fact Adafruit libraries well Adafruit isn't known for sitting still and uh, they've managed to change their libraries I guess over the last few years and it works very nicely with this let's have a look first of all if you're thinking well yeah I'd love one of those but they're going to be expensive aren't they well they can be I mean certainly if I was to buy this from a UK supplier then I think yeah that's that's a little bit pricey for me I don't really want to go down that route and of course if you buy them from Adafruit themselves they're pricey as well I don't think we can get them in the UK directly from Adafruit you can in the US though but once again they're pricey and it would probably stop me using it in a project but luckily of course our Far Eastern friends have jumped on the bandwagon and they make it so much more affordable so let's first of all find out where I got it and how much it costs that you can decide yeah I'm interested in one of these what what can I do with it when I know that the price is right here we are and um, indeed this is where I got it from now I've had this in my little box for about must be six months because I haven't had a project yet in which to use it but I most certainly do have now so I thought right now's the perfect time to dig it out and get it all up and running and well the downside for me of course is that this is a shield and for those of you who have been watching my videos pretty much as I release them you know that I've only just replaced my Arduino Uno full-size board fairly recently because I used the other one up in the loft so um, I've just replaced this one now I'm going to have to replace it again however 
the replacement Uno board I got here was um, I think it was two pound forty two, which um, well I just double check that, but it's it wasn't a price I could argue with. So here we are anyway at the um, well Banggood I got it from what's that in dollars so we have a look so in US dollars six dollars seventeen that's not bad is it euros five euros seventy one what other currency can we uh, Australian dollars I suppose is there an Australian dollar on here I don't really know what I'm looking for actually a US dollar maybe nope can't find it oh don't don't all screw me oh maybe that's the, maybe is that it maybe eight dollars thirty Australian dollar okay well that's that's a I think from a GBP point of view that's not a bad price at all a penny under five pounds and uh, you can probably get it a few pennies cheaper than this if you hunt around AliExpress or somewhere like that but that's not too bad is it and of course remember it's not just a shield it's a touch screen so really you're buying not just a color monitor you're buying the ability to draw buttons on much in the same way as I've done down here because that means you don't have to um, add any extra buttons to your project now of course that's not totally without pain but uh, well we'll come on to that in a minute now the sketch I'm using just to demonstrate this is well please don't use this as an example all right it's just a monolithic chunk just to prove that we got it working but what you can see here is that I'm using Adafruit libraries now these are standard Adafruit libraries I haven't touched them they're the ones that are current as of this video so April 2017 and uh, I'll put a link into the video below this one and also put a copy of these in my um, github folder just so you've got the actual libraries that I'm using now the good thing about using the more modern libraries the updated libraries from Adafruit is that you can include different fonts now we'll stop just before you think whoopee I can have 20 different fonts no you can't you'll run out of space long before you get down to your fourth or fifth one okay but I have included one here um, this is the bold 24 now I can't even actually even fit this one on particularly well have I in fact even used it uh, yes there we are that hello that's um, a 24 point but I couldn't uh, fit anything else on but in my particular project I needed a large font and I'll come on to that in a little while um, you have to define all these pins um, this particular sketch I can't remember where it came from it's probably an example one with um, Adafruit's libraries they've put some of these um, colors and things on here so that we can just easily use them which is well quite useful I think isn't it really and what else let's have a look oh well I've put the colors into an array you'll see why in a minute well if you've watched the demo you might have even figured it out now the touch aspect of this screen is of course optional you don't have to use touch but uh, if you do then you have to declare a touch screen object this one here and that uses up more pins of course um, in fact it uses up the analog pins or some of them anyway well here it says a3 and a2 but there are a lot of pins on here that are used we'll talk about that in just a sec so having declared all this so basically you've got an object for the output to display all this text and then you've got an object this uh, TS touchscreen for receiving um, values back what you actually get back is a, a touchscreen object that gives you the pressure and the X and Y coordinates now let me unplug this because I want to show you the actual module just so that you get an idea of the way we've set it up because the very next statement I believe is all about setting rotation you can see this bit here and I've got it here in landscape because that's probably the way you would use it but you might not you might want it like that and there's no good with the writing going that way is it so let's just uh, unplug all this and we'll talk it through right so here we are then with an unplugged screen um, is the reset button on here by the way that does reset the entire um, Arduino underneath just linked through so underneath okay it tells you it's a 2.4 LCD screen that's fine um, the analog pins are down this end so when that plugs in like that this is the analog end isn't it here on the board okay that goes in like that and then there's some power stuff 
up here and this end of course uses all the standard SPI and a few digital pins to go with it. Now it's also got an SD card now if you don't use the SD card slot reader read well reader writer then you you're free one more pin but there's not many pins you can use in fact let me just double check that right according to um adafruit themselves they say that uh, you've got f the free gpi pins you've got two three four five just four pins and if you're not using that sd card uh, you get 12 as well but otherwise it's going to use them all up which is the price to pay for an lcd screen um, however as i say at the price of this which is five pounds plus a cheap uno board like this which i'm pretty sure was about two pound fifty or so it's not a bad combination and you could potentially even view this as a sort of a self-contained module and have a different arduino or even a pi board or something to connect into this one to send data down to it but that's just an idea um well while we're at it while we're at it let's just nail on the head a minute just how much this uno board cost me because obviously i've just ordered another one because i'll be using this one now on the project which i'll come on to very very simple project but i did need a screen so let's see how much the uno costs me right here we are on the screen i've just bought this this is the correct price that i paid two pound 36 and uh, it doesn't show the dollars but a dollars are worth about 125 so that's about probably about 350 dollars something like that okay for an arduino uno uh, full size so we are 236 for that and as i say the actual um, screen was a five pound from banggood so as a price that's not too bad is it right let's um, move on to the actual project that i want to do and i can show you a bit more about the orientation and stuff because i think it's important that, that gets sorted out and uh, yeah it's pretty easy to do actually right so the orientation of the screen um, by default um, I think is with naught naught being in this top left hand corner here and uh, you there are four obvious uh, rotational steps you can have nothing in between so you can set the rotation to zero which is the default portrait mode or one or two or three so that's pretty simple isn't it really uh, having set it in the correct way and you can change this on the fly if you really want in fact the demo program does just that it displays some text and then orientates the screen and does it in a different way um, you can do the orientation then on the fly and um, you've just got to remember where your zero zero is so the x coordinates obviously across the top so x that way y that way and that's the format for most of the um the functions that call anything to do with positioning so set cursor for example will expect an x value first followed by the y now i was going to take you through my little project code but i've had second thoughts actually because i think the the huge big monolith thing i just threw together as a demo actually works quite well um, well just to show a few of the features so let's look at that and uh, i'm going to plug all this back in again actually so i can show you what it's doing while it's doing it if that makes sense so let me do that and uh, I'll be back in two secs. So this being a shield, this literally just plugs straight in. I mean, you can see where the, the pins just fall into space. You should never have to force it. It will in fact just, like you see, just get them all lined up and uh, push down so they're, they're shut. So a tight fit with the, um, the large USB socket here and the power jack, but that's it. It's all comes together now. Now the beauty about the shield, of course, is that you don't have to think about wiring there's no dupont cables nothing like that but what do you think the downside is yeah how do you get access to the rest of the pins and of course yes i do have pin headers in there but i'm just thinking well if i was to put a dupont cable such as this one here so here we have some dupont cables well female ones if i was to put those on there i suspect it's all going to foul on this board so that's not brilliant and of course i will want to connect things to this so i'll let you know how i get on on that score normally um i think when you have shields you can add in some additional spaces i don't mean just pull it apart like i'm doing now um, i could put on another set of 
header pins in here. Just plug them in and then push this in on top of that. So of course it would mean that this would sit further away from the board, but at least I could get to my pins on in the inside there. Anyway, I'll let you know how I get on with that. So okay, that's all in. Let's just plug the uh, power and USB back in. Now if you do this and all you end up is a white screen, it means the libraries haven't worked for you and the, the, the connections are wrong. Now I've had to make a, a couple of minor changes uh, to my, well not the sketch, well I suppose it is the sketch, it's the way it calls the values within the library. So the begin statement for the TFT itself, you have to tell it what sort of board you got. Now this one, I'll just check my notes here, it's an SPFD 5408, there it is on the screen look. So SPFD 5408 um, and there are literally, oh, there must be a dozen different types of board out there and the problem is that because the boards use different chips people use the wrong libraries, the wrong boards and then wonder why nothing happens. Additionally, not just that, the pin um, assignments here sometimes change between one release of the board and the other. So you, if you've got a working sketch and it just happens to be using these particular pins here for touch and then suddenly you plug in a different shield and the touch stops working because the pins have been changed and you have to make that amendment in your code. It's tricky and it's frustrating when it doesn't work. So lots of people have got this bit working but not the touch. And the touch of course I think does add that extra value to this that makes you want to use it. Well, does me anyway. Okay, so um, let's have a look at the code then. I'll leave this running, even though it's, there's a little bit of glare, isn't there? The trouble is this green is so shiny, look at it, and I've taken off. It comes with this protective shield on here, right? So that's, when you get it, it's all stuck on nice and shiny and tight, but of course I've ripped this off so many times now, it's all looking a bit rubbish. This one here hasn't had its paper taken off yet, so you can see that's that's nice and clean and you can probably use it like that but once you start peeling it off then uh, it goes back like a piece of old cellophane and looks a bit rubbish quite frankly. So off with that and we'll just have to put up with the glare. Right we'll leave that running there. Oh that flickering you can see in the background that's actually the ceiling fan behind me because it's quite warm in this office today. Right enough of that back to the code. Right as I said this was a just something I threw together to get that this writing all up here. I wasn't going to go through it but having thought about it, if you're a beginner at doing this it's probably easier to read something that is a monolith than actually trying to pick apart a few functions. So we've been through the beginning bits where we declare the library, we've defined a few of the pins, what goes where. Um, okay the colours are a sort of a, a plus really just to make it easy. I've put the colours also into a, an array here so that when this bit is displayed we can choose the colours from an array. Uh, then what? Well, okay we do this uh, touch screen. Uh, the sensitivity, the minimum and maximum pressure is up to you, you can decide what you want. So if you want the lightest of light touches you could put instead of 10 here you could put I don't know two or three. Assuming that there's no noise on here, uh, zero means no touch but as we know from all analogue inputs Sometimes it, it can be a bit noisy and what you don't want is for it to trigger a touch when nothing's happened. So it's set here to 10. I don't really know why we've got a maximum pressure really. I mean you've either pressed it or you haven't. I don't know what the maximum pressure means. What, you've pressed it so hard that it's not registering as a touch anymore. I don't know, perhaps if, if this was portable and you were to grab it like you do your phone, maybe it doesn't want to register as a touch. Well, whatever it's available and it's expecting that here so okay so here we're doing a reset uh, that's what basically initializes everything now look here this is probably quite important as i said this is an s dfp 5408 yeah and uh, you have to specify that in the begin because otherwise it doesn't always detect which screen you've got in fact it might require that now as a parameter but that's what catches people out. They're using the wrong value here and then wondering why their screen doesn't work. So make sure you're using the right value. You'll have to look into the library, the TFT library. 
Right, the next one's rotation. Now I've set it to three, which is 270, I guess. Let's have a look. If that was, if that's one, a uh, zero rather, that'd be zero, one, two, three. Yes, that's right. Now I've got my cable curled up. So yes, that's three. That's all the way around 270 degrees. And I'm just picking a random number here just for this purpose because I'm picking random colors in part of this. So to clear the screen, there is no clear screen. What you actually do, you fill it with a black color. The cursor is all a bit hit and miss, quite frankly. Maybe there's um, a program. I wouldn't be at all surprised if there's not a program out there to generate some parameters for you to say the placement of buttons rather than you trying them out for the umpteenth time trying to get into a line. But I've not bothered looking for one. I'm just guessing half the time for this because it's just not that critical. So you set your cursor. Remember that zero is in top left. And there's how many? 320 was it? How much was it on this one? It says 240 by 320. I don't think this is any different. So you can, you can guess how many pixels down you are. You're never going to watch any HD movies on here. And if you look at the speed at which this is being generated, I mean, you can actually see it building up each line. So it's not fast. There are some libraries out there that are quicker, but well, I'm not particularly after speed. I just want functionality more than anything else. Uh, there's my large font that I'm using for my hello. Now the way you do that with the new Adafruit libraries, you say set font and you give it a reference to the font that we've included oh, way up the top somewhere. And there's the include statement and that's what we're referencing in our code a little bit later on. Anyway, you can set your text size. It's all relative between 0, 1, 2, 3. If you go to three, though, you probably won't fit more than a couple of letters on here. And all this does then is go down the screen. It delays it in certain places, putting in some text, the color clears it now and again and basically displays what you saw on here. So it starts off with a large hello, then the Arduino Nights bit, a little bit smaller, text size one. Then it does all that in different colors. And there's a little delay. Now this bit here, it's just getting a random color and redisplaying this. As you can see, the colors are changing as we're looking. Just picks a random color out of that array. All pretty simple stuff, but quite impressive to watch. You know. And then it draws the buttons. It's not even a button really. It's just a, a picture that we've declared or displayed on our screen. So I've got a white blob with the word OK in it. Now, when I read that, I'm saying, look, wait one touch. There's a routine down here that goes and gets it. So the wait one touch says, go and get me my touch. And I've even cheated on here. I've said, look, I don't care where you touch. I'm not looking for the boundaries of that button. So I could touch it up here, see? But normally in my other sketch, you do have to touch it in the button. But then all you have to do is take the values from the button that you've created here. It's the same, same size, isn't it? The area in which you are allowed to touch as part of the button must be, by logic, the same size that you've made your button here. And as it says, it's the X and Y coordinates, the width, the height. Uh, that's the rounded corners, the three. If you don't want rounded rectangle, you just say fill rect without the round bit in the middle and omit that parameter. All very simple stuff. And um, that's it. That is it. That's just a random color generator. So that's pretty simple, isn't it? OK, let's let me ro load up my project, which is quite frankly, not a lot. Well, it's, it is no more complex than this, but uh, you'll see why I need this and uh, a practical use. Well, practical for me. I don't suppose you'll be building the same for one second. Right. So this is actually my implementation now for a project I really need, do need to do. As you know, Benny, my rescue cat, has access to an outside run and he's got it from the main living room. And I want to know where he is because sometimes we look out and we can't find him. We think, is he outside? Can't find him there. Is he indoors? Can't find him there. And we can start to panic a little bit in case he's got out. So what I'm going to do is put a sensor in his run or his walkway to the run. Uh, it's all enclosed so he can't escape and um, tell me when he's in and when he's out. So this is um, the sketch touch. So there it says Benny is in. Now you can't really read what it says underneath because the, um, let me dim this down. 
there we are now you can read it that's that's looking much more like it does in real life as well so what the census is going to tell me is Benny's in and he's been in for 23 minutes and when he goes back out it will detect that he's gone out two simple PIR detectors on his um, well catwalk quite literally going down to his cage um, it will say ah oh, yes I can detect that he's gone past these two sensors he must therefore be out um, so for demo purposes this white bit this white area down here is a button so if I press here look nothing happens but if I press the white bit it's a button and there he goes oh Benny's out and he's been out for 14 hours and five minutes and well perhaps not quite that long but he does stay out there for many hours so that's what my project is going to be um, and it's well as you can see it's very simple but I do want this to be visible at a distance so am I going to connect this up to something like an ESP8266 don't know yet am I going to connect it up to an NRF 24L01 could well do because let's face it the only thing this needs to know is one of two states he's either in or he's out that's it oh, there's nothing else a perfect job for an NRF L, NRF 24L01 transceiver unit isn't it one here and one out in his cage so that that's probably top of my list at the moment and luckily I know a chap who's done a whole video on the NRF 24L01s very good it is too and explains it quite well yes okay it's my one it's the one on screen now yes and um, I'll be following that my own advice as it were and I think that's probably going to be top of my list because then I can build this in a fairly small box with a transparent lid and this will be nice and visible and I can put some extra logic of course into the Arduino here to say how long for so the transmitter won't tell me how long it's been out there for this will work it out whenever the state changes it'll be at zero and this will just clock it up doesn't need an R RTC a real-time clock doesn't need anything like that all it's going to do is count the milliseconds okay because it's accurate enough for what we want it really doesn't matter whether Benny's been indoors for 23 minutes or 23.1 minutes does it? it just doesn't matter in this case all I want to know is is he in or is he out and roughly how long has that state been like that okay so that's my project and I think that will be fairly easy to do in fact the more I think about it that NRF 24L01 is probably the solution rather than the SP826 which is a bit of an overkill isn't it right so you've seen roughly what I'm going to do with this you've seen roughly how easy it is to do there we are okay that's it then I'm going to put all the libraries and links to libraries below this video but I'll actually include the two current libraries the ones I'm using here because I know that those libraries can quickly change on the Adafruit site and you might be watching this video in six months time a year's time with exactly the same shield wondering why it doesn't work because Adafruit have actually changed their libraries so copy will be included on that github and I think everything else is pretty much well self-explanatory really isn't it certainly you'll be able to read through this and have no problems at all in finding out what's what the biggest problem quite frankly is working out your x y coordinates so if you see here this set cursor zero zero okay that's top left that's fine but what about down here for example 100 170 how did I get that well I started off with a rough and ready guess did it wrong changed it looked at it again it's a little bit repetitive to get it right but uh, well I haven't got that many buttons on there in the final project I won't have any at all right I'm going to leave it there and let you decide whether £4.99 is good value for a shield and indeed £2.42 or thereabouts for an Arduino full-size board underneath because the two go together in my view very very well indeed okay and I'll put this one up way back in my little box and maybe use that for a future project in six months oh this one here incidentally is just a, a 16 by 2 lcd and doesn't it seem so yesterday compared to one of these horses for courses anyway let's not disparage it okay that's it thanks very much for watching and i'll see you in the next video i hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting there are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below and if you'd like to subscribe to this channel just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos thanks for watching